we have a couple of stragglers coming up the road still, but we'll commence before they get here. Just uh, a new announcement too, a directive from Synod once again, there is no singing, whether masks are on or not. We're, we're not allowed to sing. So it's not law, but it's a directive from Synod and, and I guess we're obligated to abide by their directives. I fight them occasionally, but on this one I won't. <laughs> Let's come into the Lord's presence. Let's hear the call to worship. Jesus calls us to follow and when we do, we're set free. Free to love with abandon. Free to embrace our whole selves. Free to care for the world as Christ does. Jesus' call is a call to freedom. We're set free by the love of God. Let's join in worship. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Spirit of freedom, move amongst us and through us this day. Guide us and guard us as we seek to follow you. Grant us a liberty which only you can give, one which ennobles our hearts and minds, gifting us wholeness and safekeeping. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart for the freedom offered in, in you causes dancing and singing, that which we're not allowed to do at this moment, Lord, but still it gives us that freedom. We give thanks, O oh God, for the Spirit's tending to our souls. It's a Spirit whose breath gently shakes the chains which bind us and then sets us free. Praise be to you, Lord God, for in you we find all things. Amen. Our first song this morning is a beautiful song and I, I swapped the first and last around so I've got to go to the end of the service to see the first song. It's Worthy is the Lamb. It's a, it's a medley done by Sounds Like Rain. They're a family of Christians. They, they have home church and, and they're just musically gifted. And so let's listen to whatever I said again.
the Lord God Almighty are a, a beautiful young family. They've got six boys and, yeah, they get asked all these quiz questions. Are you Amish or are you Jewish? But, no, they're a, a Christian family that try to live biblically. And, yeah, if you look at their YouTube sites, you'll, they answer a lot of those questions. Let's come into the Lord's presence once again with uh, our prayers of confession. Let's pray. Gracious God, we confess that we too are bound by fear and hate and division. Sometimes in the face of your pure love, pure love, we too call out, have you come to destroy us? Free us, Lord, from that which binds us. We confess that all too often we're bound by our own desires, our need for security, our need for the predictable, our need to be prosperous. We often cling to these desires, even when we know they, they'll bring pain for others or ourselves. Free us, Lord, from that which does bind us. We confess that all too often we're bound by our own inability to trust. Our calling as your children, each other as sacred vessels and your love in all things. Yes, free us, O oh God, from that which binds us. Release us into the bright light of a new day, we pray, in the light of Jesus Christ. Hear these words, the works of God's hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. The freedom offered in Christ is ours today. Our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Pam is going to bring us our, ah, oh, know the face now. <laughs> Thanks, Pam. You did get my message, I nearly rang back. <laughs>
the reading today is from Mark chapter 1, verses 21 to 28. Jesus drives out an evil spirit. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. John Bell's song, The Summons. My wife hadn't heard of it before, but I'm sure most of you here have heard of John Bell's song. It's become one of the church's favourite hymns in recent years. It's a challenge to hear the call of Christ, going into unknown territory, leaving behind the cruel and unkind parts of ourselves, while also learning to love the person God created us to be. It's a bold reminder of the tension between dying to self while not killing self in some fatalistic way. Sometimes the call to discipleship overlooks the healing that's needed to move forward into Christ's way of life. This reading from Mark suggests that it is exactly in the context of the call that we're set free from from that which binds us both internally and externally. How might we welcome and embrace the freedom Christ offers? Again, as we ponder those thoughts, in Christ we are set free. Let us bring before God our gifts of gratitude and again due to COVID our offerings will be received either electronically or after the service in the offering box at the rear, if you've not already done so. Could I invite you to please stand as we offer up a prayer of thanks. Loving God, we come before you with these gifts that we bring this morning and with our very lives. We place them before you with thoughts of how they may be used in your service. Use them and us to grant freedom to in this, your, your world, Lord. Bless these gifts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Our, no- <laughs> our, no- song, our next song is uh, Help Us Accept Each Other. It's been a favourite of mine for a long time. Becky Messer is singing this one. So let's sit back and enjoy Help us accept each other as Christ accepted us. Teach us a sister, brother, each person to embrace. Be present, Lord, among us and bring us to believe. We are ourselves accepted. Just to 
us bow our heads. Lord, we give thanks and praise for your word. We thank you for the freedom that we have to choose whether we follow or whether we disobey, Lord. Father, today as I speak, I do pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be honouring to you and encouraging, if not challenging, to your people. And I ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. This Sunday's text is the second of six opening episodes where Mark presents the nature of Jesus' ministry. Here in a very active day, we see various glimpses of Jesus. This episode is clearly in two parts in which Jesus teaches in the synagogue, then becomes an exorcist. Jesus as an exorcist is quite important in Mark's depiction of Jesus. Jesus is not unique in being an exorcist. For roving exorcists are mentioned elsewhere in in Matthew chapter 12 and in Luke 11, Mark's depiction of Jesus as an exorcist is interesting because it's linked, as Mark does, in me- it does many times with Jesus' teaching. Jesus teaches with authority. The exorcism seems to validate his authority. However, we're impressed in our interpretation of this story that that Jesus, who Mark has introduced as none other than Messiah and Son of God, is also one who confronts and responds to human suffering and need. Even though Jesus has an exalted title, he waves headfirst into human misery. He doesn't look the other way when this tormented man encounters him in the synagogue. Later, Jesus will refer to his mission as breaking into Satan's house and binding him. And we find that in Mark chapter 3. In these exorcisms, Jesus shows that his mission is more than, than preaching and teaching. It's also ministering to human need even when that need is nothing less than demonic in its source. Strange, demonic powers seek to engulf God's good creation. Yet God does not just sit back and let these powers have their way. God shows up in Jesus Christ who rebukes these demons, literally scaring the hell out of the demons who recognise that he's come to, he's come head to head with one more powerful. Evil is still a very real presence in our world. This strange story does not explain or argue about evil and its place in God's scheme of things. Rather, it simply says that when Jesus encountered the demonic, he rebuked it and thereby showed that This was not God's intention in the creation of the world. That's the statement of faith that lies behind today's good news. In this Sunday's text, Jesus enters the synagogue at Capernaum. He does some teaching, but but his teaching is interrupted by the shouting of a a tormented, demon-possessed man. Now, few of us today take take demons very seriously. But there's something in the story that I want you to take with, with great seriousness. Jesus shows up in the middle of human misery and torment. There in the middle of it all, he doesn't explain away the pain. Rather, he works for healing and restoration. After his son died when his car plunged into Boston Harbour, the great preacher William Sloan Coffin preached his most memorable sermon in which he said, When a person dies, there are many things that can be said and at least one thing that should never be said. The night after Alex died, a woman came by carrying quiches. 
she shook her head saying sadly, I just don't understand the will of God. Coffin said instantly, I just jumped all over her. I'll say you don't, lady. Do you think it was the will of God that Alex never fixed the lousy windscreen wiper? That he was probably driving too fast in a storm? Do you think it's God, God's will that, that there are no street lights along that stretch of road? Nothing so infuriates me as the incapacity of intelligent people to get it through their heads that God doesn't go around with his finger on the triggers, his fist around knives, his hand on the steering wheel or filling those drivers with ice or putting people on rocks when the surf is treacherous. God is dead set against all unnatural deaths. The one thing that should never be said when someone dies is, it's the will of God. Coffin's own consolation lies in knowing that it was not the will of God that Alex died, that when the waves closed over the sinking car, God's heart was the first of all hearts to break. Where was God when Alex drowned? Or for that matter, where was God in the Sydney siege or the Bali bombings or the Paris murders or through this horrible COVID pandemic? It's the sort of question we tend to ask when, when trouble knocks on our door and it's our turn to be in torment. Sometimes we ask why, but isn't it interesting that, that we more often ask where? Some of our greatest minds have pondered the, the why God question. Some of them have come up with some plausible answers. Others of them just throw up their hands or humbly confess that there really is no great answer to why God. Behind the where was God question is the horrible thought that maybe wherever God may be, God is somewhere but far removed from here. Here we are down here with our occasional troubles and miseries, and miseries which for some people among us are unrelenting. And there's God up there. You've heard William Sloan Coffin's reply. When the waves closed over the sinking car, God's heart was the first of all hearts to break. Is this consolation enough? It seems to have been adequate for this grieving father. God is love, but God also gives a, a wide berth for us to act freely down here, even when we stumble. But that same God doesn't stop loving us any more than earthly fathers love their children. The challenge is to say that God does not cause wrecks or sickness and not to say that God is responsible. God created this world, this world which is thump, sometimes so hard a place for so many. What kind of responsibility does love normally assume? God did not create us as puppets or robots. We have some degree of choice and free will. We are finite, mortal creatures, and we hurt, we weep, our hearts break. Doesn't ever love, doesn't ever love anything, much less anyone. If you don't want to risk the pain of loss. Sorry, I read that wrong. Don't ever love anything, much less anyone. That sounds better, doesn't it? If you don't want to risk the pain of loss. To say God loves is to claim that God risks loving us and therefore must weep over our losses because those losses are God's losses too. 
I think, therefore, that Coffin was right to say that, that God grieved at the loss of Alex. But Coffin said more, and I think more is said about this matter of our suffering and God's love in today's text. Where was God when Alex died? Or where was God when Alex was born? Where was God each step of Alex's life? There with Alex in love. Love is noted for its presence, its connection to the lover, to the beloved. Where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence, it says in Psalm 139 in verse 7. Where is God? Here, particularly in our times of misery and pain. How do we know this? You came here perhaps silently shouting at Jesus because of some tragedy in your life, only to have him shout back, I still love you. Where is God? God is here. We think we know God's heart because of Jesus. This time last year, the lectionary looked at the story of Jesus and the death of Lazarus. Jesus learned of the death of his friend Lazarus and what did he do? Jesus began to weep. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. He pitied Peter and even wicked Pontius Pilate. Rather than lash out at those who crucified him, his heart broke. He died the way you and I die, even worse. That's who God is. That's where God is. Christianity believes that in Christ, God takes evil and suffering on God's own self on the cross of Jesus. Suffering is real. We all know that. It happens to everyone, some more than others. God doesn't cause suffering, we believe. God bears it. God risks a broken heart and a victory that is God's resurrection is a victory that isn't complete until the end of time when every tear will be wiped away and God gets what God wants for God's beloved. Where is God? Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Please note that Jesus calls God, My God. God is not remote, up there in the hour of cruciform suffering. God's there, close and caring, daring to intrude into our pain, taking our shouts and cries and embracing us still. Is this consolation enough? I think it is, and I think it's true. Today's gospel reminds us that, that God does more than simply care. God does more than merely stand beside us in the darkness of our despair. God powerfully reaches out to us, rebukes the demonic evil that has thrown us in this, this horrible situation and thereby lifts us up. Sometimes God lifts us up by providing us with, with good friends who also show up, speak a word of compassion to us, encourage us to move on, lift us up in ways which we couldn't lift ourselves. This too, we believe, is, is part of God's love. In these first chapters, Mark surely means to show us that the cross of Christ wasn't just a one-time event for Jesus, but was part of his whole ministry. Jesus suffers opposition from humans and from demons who shout at him and curse him. Jesus suffers for his love for us. This is who God is. The cross is then like a window into the heart of God. 
God doesn't pull strings in our lives down here, but that doesn't mean God is absent. God is especially here in our times of suffering. I'm sure that there are some here who could testify to that truth this morning. We're just beginning the Gospel of Mark, but let me tell you how this Gospel ends. The God who shows up in Jesus shows up at the end, most clearly and lovingly, not in some lovely forest glade where where Jesus relaxes with his good friends. God shows up on the cross, a horrible end for one so good. Where is God? Where there are crosses, there is God. God didn't stay trapped in heavenly glory, but, but rather came and confronted and squared off with the worst evil the world could give for us, with us. Thanks be to God. Come among us, Lord Jesus. Deliver us from the de- demons that, that bind us. Heal us of wounds that we cannot heal ourselves. Touch our pain with your strong compassion that we might be made whole through your grace. Amen. You'll like this next one. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. St. Michael's singers. Let's sit back and listen.
but that took some willpower for you not to burst into song. <laughs> I can hear a couple of voices somewhere. <laughs> Lynn, ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> for all that you've given us this morning, all the teaching. We really appreciate it. Um, I saw the children getting on the school bus for the first day of school <laughs> on Friday, and it was a miserable, miserable, horrible, horrible wet day, and they were huddled there, not wanting to get on the bus, but not wanting to stay there any longer. And I thought, that is what a miserable day, Lord. Why have such a miserable day for the beginning of school? And then I went into the garden on Saturday afternoon and the garden was powering ahead and was really happy. And um, so, yes, it's very <coughs> difficult for us to understand, isn't it? We have a verse in our room which says, don't be afraid of tomorrow because God is already there. You see. So let us pray. Let us Get together and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Ray and the faithful teaching he brings us each Sunday. We thank you for the faithful work of Swanee as he helps the 9 a.m. service with the sound system and brings lessons of faith to the evening service and reaches out to the community with the children's programs. Please bring good health, strength and wisdom to Swanee and Laura and bless Grace and Micah as they begin their school. Thank you that Dawn Miller has safely moved and is settled in an independent unit at Mayflower, in a lovely area and close to friends. We also thank you for the help she was given by friends to make this move so much easier. We pray that you will refresh her and encourage her and strengthen her as she recovers from this move. Lord, we, the holidays are over and we are starting all the programs in our church. Heavenly Father, please give wisdom to the members of the GUC Church Council as they get together soon to look at the oversight of the running of the church. It is wonderful that the kids pluck up Kids clubs can take place this year with the, uh, be with the leaders of Dig and Dig and Dig as they organize the fun and teaching for these groups. We pray the children who come will learn about the love of God from the teachings and the example of the leaders. We pray for the young children and, the, and their parents who come for kids play on Fridays. Bless this group so that the young parents can make friendships here, but also be aware of God's love that comes to them through the helpers at these names. Protect those young children as they play together. We pray for the start of scripture at Gerangong Public School this year. Thank you for this outreach. The children really enjoy the hope and joy that the stories from the Bible give them. They know that God loves them. With the new government guidelines of one adult per class, we will need an extra classroom this year. Please oversee this situation so that the administration at Gerangong Public School will be able to provide the room that is needed. Lord, we pray for the situation in Victoria where bans are now being brought in to stop the prayers of faithful Christians. Give wisdom to the Christians there. We pray for the Christians in Armenia and Nigeria who are going through such terrible persecution that it is really a genocide. Lord, please give strength and resilience to the Christians in Nigeria and Armenia at this time. And we pray the cruelty will soon end. Heavenly Father, we thank you that on every day and in every situation, you are with us. 
we thank you for your loving care. We live in a sinful, rebellious world, but we know that you are always there. We remember you said to Joshua when he was about to enter the promised land, be strong and courageous. Don't be fearful or discouraged because the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We just have a few moments while you pray for anything which is important to your heart. Just a few moments. now we will say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Say it. Thank you, Lyndon, for those beautiful prayers. I never cease to be amazed at how God is working within and through this congregation. I, I came up to put my PowerPoint on Thursday morning and I drove into the driveway and I thought, what's going on here? Is there a funeral or something? There were that many cars. I asked one of the ladies and they said, it's a KYB group. I've never seen such a big KYB group. <laughs> Must have been 60 or more people there. So, yeah. 59. 59. <laughs> oh, I'm sure the Lord is blessing those people. That's amazing. I just, I was mind blown. I thought, what? KYB? <laughs> I'm sure you'll love, now I've got to go back. Oh, it's a summons. John Bell, my first song is now my last song. And I'm sure you'll enjoy this, and I'm sure you'll know it when you hear it. It's the summons by John Bell from the Iona community. Lovely song.
Could I ask you to please stand? Called in love and offered freedom in Christ, let us go forth to live out the hope that is in God, unencumbered by all those things that bind us. Go out in the strong name of our Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Please be seated and enjoy your cuppa.